and we are good to go hello and welcome everyone to episode number 71 at the indie football podcast uh we recently completed two years at the podcast and we thought why not to diversify things a bit so we decided to uh increase our panel in terms a bit in terms of quantity but hugely in terms of quality because we have ranjit bajaj with us today here uh thank you ranjit sir for taking out the time today uh we have heard massively about your work about all the awards that you have got and it just feels great to have someone as eminent as you in our podcast first things first i'll write i'll straight away ask you how did you think about india's match against australia just two days ago first of all thank you so much for having me on the indie football past the yeah. podcast ifp as i can see yes. a satellite <laughs> and not yes. only that the 71st episode that means you guys are doing something good because otherwise even if you even if it's just three men grown like you just said before the podcast three grown men <laughs> <laughs> talking to each other online every night that doesn't look nice but that means you'll be doing something good because it's been going on so keep it up yes. guys because we need as much discussion on uh, football our 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 beautiful game um see first of all the game i honestly even though i am a guy who will say never say die and i believe in the biggest of all odds playing against it yes before the match i would say anything is possible but you have realistic expectations from every team yes. and i can guarantee my life on it that when um, argentina played saudi arabia uh, sorry argentina played um, um, who did they very draw with yeah uh, they drew with so Sa- Sa- they saudi lost to saudi arabia sir i think too yeah lost saudi yeah. yeah the saudi arabian coach never even once thought in his life that he yeah. will get a victory and all he wanted to do was not get hammered that day and that is why he was playing that low block and just waiting waiting low block low block mm-hmm. low block and just waiting for the chance that maybe i'll get one back because i'll get five scored against me okay yeah. so that was the expectation so uh the expectations honestly speaking were the same here especially not because our team is bad but because if you uh, are a boxer and they tie your hands behind your back doesn't matter how good you are and doesn't matter how bad the other boxer is having a day because football mein kya hota the other team is having a bad day you have a great chance doesn't matter what team yeah. so doesn't matter what kind of a bad chance they having if your hands are tied behind your back as a boxer you dead and that's what mm-hmm. unfortunately now see we can blame everybody we can blame isl fsdl aiff ourselves fans everybody but end of the day what has happened is happened jo bhi hua hua hai hua ye hai ki the only bloody team in the asian cup would in play any practice matches Yeah, and we are the only team which went without any proper preparatory camp, which ended with a ma- proper match. We had an yes. intra. So I never heard of this before. Intra squad practice match. Okay, so that's how we play. If we go, our intra intra squad will be. So two, 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 two. Then the next day, two, two. That kind of thing happened. Right. And um, getting Trevor Sinclair, people didn't know about it. That see, understand, he's come in as a set piece specialist for preparing for this. So that means they're looking for just defending deep, and they know that when you're defending deep, the only chances the other team either has is through your spaces or through uh, set pieces. So set piece defending becomes very important, and the same time set piece attacking becomes very important because that's going to be your only outlet. Okay, when you're playing with such great teams, right. um, and that's why that was brought in because there was no other chance with Anwar yeah. not being there. That goes your main tension of. somebody who's going to start your attack who's the one who's going to win all the second balls or who's going to take the ball from anwar and bring it up jackson was not there you didn't have sahil who's going to do the midfield magic or the creation for the final third you didn't have ashik kurian there so i would say that our team was around 30% less even in personnel okay yeah but even though they were in personnel if you had given this team a solid one month now they say okay fine you know where do clubs shut down everywhere they shut down in all the leagues there yeah. right now even if clubs are not shut down for the afcon they had to leave the biggest players of the premier league for yeah. afcon mm. so it yes, happens sir. everywhere so you have right. to adjust and now on top of that okay fine you are running the english premier league is a billion dollar league 
your league is not even in the top 20 leagues of in Asia. Okay, and you don't want to stop it. Why? Because of cricket. Now yeah. that's where my problem is. My problem is that our games' interests are being decided by commercial interests of cricket, of another game. Who a few true football lover already has a very big problem with that all the money is going there, everything is going there, and the, so you know. <laughs> In spite and despite of all this, two zero. That also, on any other day, see moment you are one zero down, and the way we were playing after that, we were yeah. not going for limiting the damage at one zero when we were one zero down. We were right. going for the equalizer because we were going for the equalizer. The kind of space which happened at the back. The space between the midfield and the defence was too much, and that is why they were able to just come and tap into the ball. And then, obviously, uh, Manveer not being a natural right back, not following his runner, and space opening up for an easy tap in. But that happens when the ha uh, the gap is there because you're trying to go on the attack. So all positives taking out, taking out of it, and I think the gap in the world. Forget Indian football. The world football is becoming lesser and lesser. Yeah, you saw that with Vietnam, and nobody could have thought of that even ten years ago. Why? Because ten years ago, Vietnam lost to us three one, two thousand ten. Yes, and that's from when the revolution started. So I would say, great job by the team, great warrior like defense by our Sandesh, and by our defensive unit. Great um, debut for Deepak Tangri. So the positives to take out of it, Deepak Tangri made. Um, everybody was thinking, oh my God, what is Igor Stimak doing? But Thankfully, he proved yeah. all of us everybody wrong. Yeah, so that's he found, he found another player. So you will find players when you put them into the cauldron, under the fire, into the pressure, and then you find out whether it's a gem or it's not. So they found a gem. Now, with our injuries coming back and everything coming back, I think positives to look for. Yeah. We can be in the top ten of Asia very soon. That means within the next four five years. That if we are in the top ten of Asia in the next four five six years. Chances of us qualifying for the World Cup becomes very easy because we're going to have nine, ten teams in thirty-four. So I, I look at it with a, such a long-term vision. Okay, how does yeah. that affect our bloody World Cup qualification in thirty-four? Yeah. It makes a lot of sense uh, because I mean, uh, like you gave the example of Vietnam, even Qatar for that matter, like they hosted the World Cup this time around, and uh, they were nowhere near even the top fifty some time back, and how they were able to, you know, uh, at least challenge teams in the World Cup. Even though I know they were the host nation, but they still gave a good, uh, uh, what no, should I say, showing that, of themselves. No. See, um, they have hmm? been given free entry. Like India was in the under seventeen World Cup yes. for the World Cup. Yeah, yeah. But even if they were not. They would have still qualified it. They became Asian champions just before that. Yeah. They actually exactly. beat all the teams in the best teams in Asia. So they were the best in Asia. So they deserve exactly. to be, there. even though they were given free entry, they deserve to be there. Exactly. And how, so people say, no, no, they used uh, citizens from outside and did it. So we are also trying to do the same. But again, that's a short-term thing. Now yeah. they'll have to do the same thing. So what has Qatar done now to make it into uh, like? The factory of what like Minerva has, but what they do is they get kids there from Africa from the age of eight, yeah, or yes, nine or ten, and they give their parents jobs, and that is their vision. So their parents' job is only to look after their kid and probably get some money, and then their kid is the one who's uh, aimed up for this. So you'll see a lot of different uh, versions were coming about our height, about our weight, about the value of the team. And you see, with the height and the weight and the value, everything almost corresponds with where we are and where we are supposed to be. Yeah. But uh, looking at what Vietnam has done, I think you should just follow them. I was I've been saying this for the last seven, eight years that follow Vietnam because they have done it with one academy, just one great world class academy they have, and that has produced the under 16 asian champions and the same team is now under 19 runners up and now they are the same same boys are now creating waves in the seniors yeah i think aditya over here who also works for the mumbai city football club and has a lot of insights because he has also done his degree in sports physiotherapy i'm sure aditya you will have a question or two as well uh so yeah i have done my degree in sports and exercise science 
and yes. uh, currently working with uh, MCFC as a assistant uh, strength and conditioning coach. So I believe, uh, so, uh, as uh, Anugash Bhai said, Vietnam has done a notable job. Same thing uh, Japan has uh, done in recent years, developing their academy. And what do you think about Arsene Wenger's visiting to India and setting up the FIFA academy? Uh, what are your thoughts on it? Uh, before uh, before yeah. Ranjit sir answers that, I know that uh, Ranjit sir is probably a big fan of Arsene Wenger because I can spot a Arsene Wenger book out there <laughs> in the background. <laughs> actually, him and then you've got Pep Kleinders. The oh, Pep this is the book that told so us. I, I'll tell you, I am a fan. See, I don't want to say that I am a Pep Guardiola or Marcelo Bielsa like, or yeah. Alex Ferguson or Bielsa. Or the Jurgen Klopp fan. Or, 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 yes, <laughs> or the Jurgen Klopp fan. I am a fan of everything yeah. which is great. So yeah. why? Because I want to bring in all the great things from everybody so that we Indians can be the best. So why not pick up everything we can from the best? Why not just, why just follow one man? I right. know it's very difficult for purists to do that, but I have learned not to have a favourite club now, even though yeah. Arsenal was. Not to have a favourite club, even though I'm not saying because Arsenal never used to win anything. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, okay? self, self yeah. But, yeah. but because, okay, by the way. We have had Spurs fans here, by the way, just yeah. saying. So, so Chiranjit, Chir- you know Chiranjit Oja. So he had tweeted once that one Arsenal fan was so fed up of his club that he formed his own club. And took it up all the way from the fourth division, won the league, won the title before the other team could use Arsenal could actually do it. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, like Arsene Wenger's philosophy of blooding them young, okay? That's yeah. what I used to love about him from the very beginning and why I was a very, and I still am a very big fan. I would say that he didn't need to because of the budget and resources he has, but he always did it. Who are the other great coaches who always did it? Pep Guardiola does it on a regular basis. Alex Ferguson, oh my God, he's a master in doing that. Why? Because yeah. I've never had a Manu team who was the first, I'm talking about the first team which has been put out without a Manu academy boy in it. Now, if you say that Manu can't afford players, that's bullshit. They can afford anyone. So can yeah. Barcelona, by the way. Hmm. But the best academies in the world are at these clubs. Why? Because they understand what a homegrown player brings. Okay, it's a different thing altogether, and you don't look at it as, um, you know, okay, should we just spend so many million on the academy, or should we just get one more player? It's a no-brainer for them. And if Indian clubs start thinking like them, it will be great. And that's what Vietnam has done. They didn't spend money on their league. They spend money on that academy, one academy, and it's given them the results. Arsene Wenger wants to do something like that. So when he came. This entire plan was basing. Uh, so earlier, I was very, and I am always very skeptical about what AFF does because of not because of anything else, because of the track record. Because this is not the first time we are hearing about a FIFA academy opening up in India and then just bloody disappearing. Yeah. But this time there was a difference. So difference was then there was a state government who does and says what it does, the Odisha government. That I would say that one government is responsible for reviving hockey in our country or making yes. it a world power again. That one yes. one state government. So that's yes. the power of our country. So that's why I'm why I'm so relaxed and I love being in the game I am. Because I know the day we'll have even one state stand up and say, okay, I'm going to support football the way Odisha supports hockey, we'll be a world power. That's how great right. we are. That's the kind of power we have now. Because they are 800, can you believe it? 800 turfs in Bloody Odisha? My God! That's a lot. That's a really so lot. You, yeah. Exactly. So, if you, that, where there's a will, there's a way. Now, are the Odisha government coming and saying that we are going to start a center of excellence? We are going to fund it. We are going to take care of the main funding. We need excellence. And so, you come in, Mr. Wenger. So, Mr. Wenger and his team came in and they set out a roadmap. They set out a plan. They've, with that plan, they've got some kids in, which were just basically selected because of the unfortunate scouting team of AIFF. Because they didn't, why I'm saying unfortunate, because there's nothing to scout from. Where do they go and look at? There's no under 13 leagues happening because yeah. they want 14 boys. See, you have to follow the cycle. You can't just say 
2047 vision so now japan has this 100 year vision they say we'll win the world cup in 2092 bloody they're going to do it now 2092 is where even your children you will be you will also be all dead man so <laughs> yeah <laughs> so, so that's interesting you mentioned saying something has to have tickable checkable transferable accountable um, goals which you have to keep achieving counting back now india's goal is very far fetched when we say 2047 we want to be in the world uh, we want to be winning the world cup we can't why because you when you look back the progression has not happened that way so when you look back if you say that i want to be and that's in the vision 2047 that i want to be in 2026 under 17 world cup for boys and girls on merit now that means in the top 4 in asia in 2026 on merit yeah that's only 2 that's years under, now that yeah, is that's 2 years away do you even have a under 14 team right now no so yeah. what are you going to do just one month before the asian cup make that team send them on a five country tour and send it yeah they'll get one win one draw one loss because our boys are good but same thing which is happening with the senior team now the senior team restrictions are not here do these boys cost you any money no do, will it cost you will the club say no no will you have enough time to do it yes so if they actually start now with a batch of 100 boys and then slim them down to 30 boys and that's what vietnam did those 30 boys are now out of the 30 i think 18 are part of the vietnam squad right now the first batch of new Okay. And look how long the process take. They started the academy in 2010-11. Yes. And it's 12 years, man. So that's mm-hmm. definitely a lot. And uh, I think one thing that I remember from all these discussions, uh, to be honest, over here, Anukar sir has been following football for almost two decades now. Not to make him sound any old. Aditya bhai also is has been following football for very long uh, and uh, ranjit sir i started off my job uh, i am a sports management masters uh, student which i just completed and there is a lot of things that i learnt about indian sports not just indian football in general and there is a lot of value given to what indian uh, clubs have achieved over the years in our history because that tells us that shares unique stories about us and of course being a bengali there is a lot of pride in you know having bengali football players the likes of chunni goswami and those people even in my family people have spoken about it even though they are not out and out football fans they they are like it just runs in their bloods that you know culture is, yeah. is culture Yeah, culture exactly true so, so uh, i was yeah i was going through your article one of the articles where they mentioned about jct fagwara and jct fagwara is a club that currently people don't know a lot about and in my first job when i told people about uh, you know i am running this football podcast what are the things that you sh- think i should talk about and everyone because maybe it's in delhi and people are closer to punjab everyone said that you should start talking about clubs that were uh, prevalent earlier and maybe one of them is jct fagwara so there's a lot of people have many good things to say about jct fagwara ranjit sir what are your thoughts about that currently unfortunately disbanded club um i grew up like you i grew up uh, idolizing jct fagwara yeah and- especially being a punjab boy dream was yeah. i'll play city for one and i was playing for under 19 india in 1998 and 1996 jct pagwara team had bhutia chapman uh, uh, kennedy sobrata paul i am vijayan well, you name them and that guy was there in the team so that was the team we all look forward to we have to play here unfortunately by 1998 99 it shut down and when it shut down it didn't just shut down punjab so people think is punjab is looking at the thing now can you believe that there are seven, there were 70 crore people living in north india when i say north india i mean uttar pradesh madhya pradesh uttarakhand himachal kashmir punjab delhi chandigarh yeah. all these people they had one club one professional club after that there was zero clubs there was not even one professional football club left in the entire north india to serve mm. 70 crore people yeah. so the generations of players we have lost after that 
from North India are immense. Because yeah. for every one player who will take risk to go out to play in Goa or to Mumbai or to Kerala, there will be five who will go take up some other sport which is available in Punjab readily. Simple. Nobody takes that risk. Okay. Now, I have great memories. I think JCT was one of the reasons why Punjab got its name on the, other than the Santosh trophies, JCT. And with Sukhi sir being at the helm, it was, I think, the reason of India's success. Because India's yeah. most successful time was under Sukhi sir. After Saeed, Saeed, Saeed Ran Nabi, it's a, it was yeah. Sukhi sir. And right. the entire, in, I think, it, like, at one time, BFC had that. And then um, Mumbai City had that. They were like, and Mumon Bagan has it now. Seven, eight players or nine players of the Indian team were from that place. And Sukhi sir was the coach of the Indian national team, Sukhinder sir, as yeah. well. And because of that, we did really well there as well. So, in fact, if you see, our best results have always come under an Indian coach. Never yeah. a foreign coach. In fact, you look at the, all the World Cup victors, they've all won their World Trophies under their own coaches. It's never a foreign coach who comes and does it. Yeah. So, maybe we can take something from there. But, saying that, um, JCT Fagwara laid the foundation for every all of us. Now, what are they doing? Now, they are basically running football. So, from a club, uh, Mr. Samir Thapar, it was his father who started the club and now he's the president of Punjab Football Association. And he's the one responsible for making sure Punjab Football Association is running. So, in fact, I think he's moved on to a larger role because I don't think he's interested in club football. But club administration, I'm sorry, state football administration, Punjab is doing, out of all the states we, we have, I, one of the best. I mean, in, in all the things we have. You know, it's uh, interesting, sir, that you uh, talk about JCT for Vada uh, uh, here because, uh, like, uh, for a club which uh, actually, like, Doipan has told me in depth about it and, you know, how much it uh, was, like, you know, important in a certain era. Uh, now, uh, what I've observed watching football for the past 20 years, and I'm just 24, so, like, you can understand I have been watching it since I was, like, a five year old <laughs> by myself. Uh, so what happened is that uh, <laughs> no, the reason sir I'm saying this is because uh, for me football meant European football like growing up earlier and it was all about uh, like I am a Liverpool fan the reason I wear this scarf is because Doi Pine is a Real Madrid fan and of course Alte Bhai too and I am a Liverpool fan though we of course always lose to the method. <laughs> but anyway, uh, the fact remains that uh, like uh, what I saw uh, uh, this time around with Minerva was that there was an uproar in the country when Minerva was able to, you know, do so well internationally. Everyone was talking about it. The influencers were talking about it. Uh, people who are eminent in the industry, football industry were talking about it. And uh, like me and Toy Payan, uh, it's been almost two, it's been more than two years now, <laughs> obviously, running mm -hmm. this podcast. And uh, like we have always stressed upon creating a football footballing culture in India because that's like the why of our podcast. So I could see that footballing culture after what Nehruva did. And then yeah. I, you know, started researching about you at that point of time. Uh, I saw the podcast you did with Omkar and some other podcasts also that you have done in which you stressed about uh, uh, how, you know, at Minerva, it's like a different way of life of how you people, how you get players and how they're trained, what you look for. So uh, please uh, elaborate on the example of what you have done at Minerva for a year so that uh, and how it differentiates from other football clubs, not to say the others are lesser, but how uh, Minerva has been able to, you know, stand out, be an outlier in the footballing industry. Okay. <laughs> I think that's a very pertinent question looking at, see, I really thought that after the first one or two years, when they see my success and they see that I'm doing it after a repeated basis, they'll actually start following me because I've been saying it from <clears throat> the rooftops that I don't have any money. I don't have any money. I'm not doing it with money. There's no money being spent. It's all just simple. It's, and it's not, that means it's not rocket science. And that's why Brazil has been doing it, man. They don't yeah. have any money. It's yeah. very simple. And then you say it's about size. It's not. Port look at Portugal. There's no size. Okay. Then they talk about number of people playing it. Look at Iceland. So you have yeah. people playing. So all the excuses go out of the window. Now at Minerva, 
we knew that as long as you guys get boys with now there's a thing about being good and there's a thing about having hunger very big difference mm. okay now if i get you from suppose some far off village of manipur maharashtra at kerala any place where you've seen your parents struggle every single day for food or for for shelter or for basic needs and then you see what how this game which you love so much and you are good in so much at your age can actually take your entire family and your entire families and uh, the village probably out of poverty you work your ass off you are you grow up really fast you are not a kid anymore you understand that very fast and then when you see also that boys like you in the same academy have done it before that's another motivation so yeah. when you come to minerva the first thing you see in our uh, next to our honor boards every age group of the indian team is mentioned so under 13 under 14 under 15 under 16 under 17 18 19 22 23 so the number of minervans and the next number is so suppose there are 14 names in under 14 or 20 names in under 15 the 21st is always left empty because that's their aim that i have to play for my country yeah. from day 1 when they are brought in here they are uh, their only job their only way of thinking is not i'm not going to be a good footballer i'm going to lose i'm going to play for india i am going to play for these three colors once you start thinking like this everything else becomes second rate to you that means the when you get into a state team and you score goals you look for better things when you get into a club team you score goals you look for better things when you get into isl you still is not happy when you start scoring goals still not happy when you make the cut then you think okay i've arrived so just for them to arrive in their lives their standards have become so high that unless you played for india and then once you played you better have done well and that means consistently played that's what so so you see all the minervans normally who get debuts they will keep playing keep playing keep playing because the hunger is there then our scouting system is very different because we don't like to go to capital cities why because every capital city is commercial that means they will have 10 different academies so if you are bloody good in mumbai you will be picked out you will not be left out there will be no messi who will be left out in mumbai <laughs> but you might be left out in probably some village in mallapuram yeah if nobody reaches you there and we are looking for those gems so that is why our scouting is different and those people try harder fight harder want to give it back to their family so our system is not only on this because i believe that at the age of 5 or 6 or 7 there are no great footballers yeah there's just passion for the game so you need to have more people who are passionate at that age who you see okay this guy will go beyond everybody else because then he'll improve beyond it doesn't matter what his skill level is obviously you need a decent level but then we don't decide about who's the best there then we see the drive so it's a very different thing altogether of how we do as it yeah uh, just on a lighter note i wanted to say if mallapuram is a place uh, geo, uh, geography is not my strongest suit but if mallapuram is a place in kerala that kid would probably earn a bit playing all the local tournaments because the fandom in that state for football <laughs> just really crazy oh, see, that's crazy same thing by the way kolapur maharashtra yeah kolapur yeah okay yeah. so we need to kids to stop yeah. thinking they need to th- start thinking the minerva way yeah this is not random random right. is 1.4 billion people singing your name yeah so i think yeah. so that's Definitely. how it is. see that's yeah. how i got out of trying to win titles okay because i won everything from junior to senior i won everything so then people say then uh, what is your motivation my motivation is the number of internationals i produce because if i win a title whatever title i win even senior junior doesn't matter what i win even if i win the bloody club world cup it will only be Miner- if i am that big it will be minerva fans and couple of thousand or lakhs indians you know doing it but if india wins the world cup or if an indian scores is 1.4 billion people cheering for him So I rather have 1.4 billion people cheering from what I have done, produce that player, than just that very few lakh people cheering when the, because that's what is end of the day. 
Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Singing and so cheering. You mentioned the, I'm yeah, sorry. I just want to say singing and cheering reminds me of when I met <laughs> Aditya for the first time. You know, it was in the Real Madrid <laughs> and I absolutely thought that guy won't be able to speak when he wakes up tomorrow morning. But <laughs> that's yeah, and you know that's what a true fan is. That's yeah. when you know you've been you've actually cheered properly, that you've done your job. So, you know, um, and by the way, so I asked my footballers, uh, what is and these are my juniors. What is the muscle which should be the most tired when you are on the field? So all uh, when the little boys now they all know, but when the little boys come in, they say, "Sir, sir, feet, or sir, legs, or sir, thighs." They answer like this because they don't know hamstrings and calves. You know, they say, they say "thighs, yeah. sir," and some they say "sir, arms, sir," because we are running. I said, <laughs> "No, it's the neck." Yeah, because you're scanning. The number yeah. of times you scan in a minute is what makes you apart. So all the time, all the time, all the time. That should yeah. be true. <laughs> End of the day. Now, as a fan, what makes you a super fan? If you can't speak the next day, that means you have done your best. So well done, <laughs> yeah. You sort of I'm definitely glad this podcast is not what? happening the next day of the India versus Australia match <laughs> because I wasn't you know, screaming. Uh, yeah. Before Alpha asks the next question, I think uh, you should watch some of her watch alongs in which we, you know, uh, uh, do uh, uh, the Real Madrid matches. <laughs> you should watch Aditya there. Uh, like I think I, it's not long time before YouTube will ban our channel <laughs> just for uh, violation of their privacy policy. <laughs> And not just for Real Madrid. Uh, before working in Mumbai City FC, I was the part of their fan club, West Coast Brigade. And uh, I always uh, tell the players, even though I'm working with you, I am your biggest fan. I am the first fan who is working in the club, and not just for Mumbai City FC or Real Madrid, but for India also. Like right now, also I'm wearing this jersey with uh, all my pride, signed by all the national team players. So this is my biggest pride, and I will always be the biggest fan, no matter wherever exactly. I'm working. Exactly, and yeah. that's who I am, bro. I'll always yeah. be the biggest fan for this. So, and in fact. That's who we all are. That's why we're sitting here today, and we're doing this podcast, and that's why you've done seventy-one of them, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Absolutely. my next question was uh, regarding uh, your previous answer, where you mentioned that for seventy uh, crore people, there was just one academy previously, which uh, uh, when the academy went down, it killed the hopes of all the players around the North India, and uh, definitely we need to work on our grassroots level. But apart from it, uh, what do you think about uh, the rumors of AIFF revoking the new rule of uh, PIO and OCI players? See, Aditya, why right now when see when I'm saying 1998, 2000, and how are things in let me say 2015 when Minerva came in? When we came in 2015, 16, there were still no academies or clubs from North India. So Minerva became the only club from North India. to be part of the i league again 70 crores people only but is it the same now no and that's what i'm so thrilled about you have clubs from every bloody state in north india now every yeah. state and not only that do you have academies yes you have seven academies in punjab only forget about one and you have academies in delhi and you have academies all over the place so it's great so we are growing up and this is the place where football was lacking so if it's growing up here that means it's becoming stronger where it was already strong strong okay. and now with the pios see um like qatar did it it's a fix you can get there yes you can probably get there by 28 or oh, sorry um, uh, 30 but it's a fix it is not actual development of the sport now the mo i tell you why because the moment a pio will come to india mr x he comes to india he plays for india he doesn't have to change his passport he becomes a huge star why because he gets 1.4 billion fans now nobody gives a damn about him yeah all the money he makes from here where does he take back to his own country india is not his country he is a pio he is not an indian he takes it back to his country where does he open up his academies or where does he want to live and where does he want to do it there back there no yeah. here okay so he's just going to come here for that that's not fair to our india we rather have someone okay if a pio is really interested 
we need to tweak the rules. So our aim should be to help the government change the rules that you should be able to revoke a citizenship and get Indian citizenship within one year. That is okay. That's what we should do. Because if they are willing to give up their passport, you're most welcome. Man. You're most welcome to join us. But saying that, okay, the moment this World Cup thing is over or the money is over, I'm going to go back to my country from wherever I've come from, Germany, Spain, England. That's not who you want. That's a mercenary. That's somebody yeah. who pay money yeah. to play for you. For example, the Qatari who's been brought at the age of eight to Qatar is not a mercenary. He's going to live for the rest of his life along with his parents, along with his family in Qatar. And he'll die in Qatar. That's the kind of people we want. Because then they'll die for you and die for the country on the pitch. Oh, yeah. You have mm -hmm. to bleed blue, by mm -hmm. I don't doubt, but I don't think uh, bleeding blue will be the number one thing on the mind of somebody who's going to come and not even give up his citizenship and play. Okay? They may be great players, but when it comes down to it, will you break your leg for your country? Will you take it right here like Sandesh Jingan does? I doubt, I doubt it after playing and singing the national anthem of Germany or Belgium or England for 27 years and just because you're playing in the championship there, you get here. I don't think it's fair to Indians. And it's a quick fix. Why? Because then you've taken up the spot of the Indian player who probably was going to be good enough. For example, we might just get two great centre-backs who are better than Anwar Ali right now. And they'll take Anwar Ali's spot right now. But I'd rather have Anwar Ali play there for the next three years because imagine what Anwar Ali will be when he's 26 or 27, man. He's a 22-year-old centre-back. But if you don't let him play those four years for India because there's somebody better than him and there are 27, 28-year-old centre-backs, then you're shooting yourself in the foot. So we right. harm our development. It's a quick fix. But yes, if you have aims that we have to get to the World Cup and that's how the money will come in and it's a quick fix start and it's only for like a time-bound period, okay, 10 years, we get development and then once the money comes in, the league becomes better, maybe. But not for a long-term arrangement that this happens all the time. Otherwise, then if Indian football will die. Yeah. And Indians playing in all the academies will never have hope. That means... And it's, it's not that, and it's not their fault because every kid who grows up, see, that's what I'm saying. Why are PIOs better than Indians? Not because they're not Indians. They're bloody Indians. Same blood, same genes, same everything. So that means you make that same, you bloody make Messi grow up here <laughs> in Patinda. Um, <laughs> I guarantee you, he wouldn't have turned into a Messi man. Yeah. So you are a product of your environment. Not of your, I don't believe in genes at all. It's your environment. Mm. And Indians put in the best, in, so Minerva, Indians yeah. put in the best environment will give you best results. Neeraj Chopra, Abhinav Bindra, our hockey team, not rocket science. Makes sense, makes sense. Uh, interesting that you raise this point because uh, coming back to the talent in the country, sir, uh, like this is like a very straightforward question and this has been, you know, bugging my mind for quite a long time. For someone like you who is so much uh, into the depths of Indian football, who knows the ins and outs of it, the ISL has been there for quite some time now. And uh, of course, like there's a lot of commercialization of the sport, but do you think the ISL is actually having a positive impact or do you think it's like a Uchi Dukan Fiki Bhakwan type scenario? Uh, I, I really think ISL has had a great impact on Indian football because, see, I'll tell you what, what does culture mean? Culture, mean, culture means your parents allowing you to choose to play a sport over some other career. Right. So do yeah. parents now allow gamers to play video games? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's, there's definitely a shift. Now, now yeah. this is okay. <laughs> Very good. Okay. Yeah. The same way they allow them to play cricket. And now the yeah. same way they allow them to play football. It's a career. Mm. That means you can look after. So for earlier, it was not that football was not a career earlier, but it was a career only for the guys who made it to the Indian national team. You have good money. Yeah. But now, if you make it to an I League team or second division team, ISL team, you have money. That means you can you can call it a livelihood. You can yeah. base your family's life on it. And the, and like what Aditya is doing right now, or what you are with, what you know, all, all of us are doing. We we have based our careers around football. We are not footballers. So, yeah. that's also possible. 
so now things are growing up and i really think now is the time for us uh, to stop trying to tear down the league see end of the day doesn't matter you call it the isl or the i league i have to have a pyramid structure simple yeah. there has to be doesn't matter what you call it okay my problem with the isl is not with the isl my problem is with the, there's no pyramid structure there's no promotion relegation and there has to be merit based promotion and relegation not because of money and then my second problem with isl is the only way clubs earn money all the clubs in the world 90% of the revenue is broadcast revenue here yeah. the owner of the broadcaster is the owner of the league yeah so there's no revenue going to come into the clubs in i'm yes my mute okay i'm talking about how do you become big because you get billions of dollars if you are a manu or a liverpool or real madrid in just broadcast revenue yeah and now that revenue is paid only for the premier league yes but who else gets money from it the championship the division 1 division 2 division 3 even the division 3 club gets 20000 pound but it's got nothing to do with the premier league but the premier league knows only the third division is strong second is strong second is strong first and only if there's a strong championship will there be a strong premiership and the strong the biggest match in the world still is the last match of the championship which is the playoff why yeah. because of how strong the bloody championship is and hamara yeah. jo pyramid hai ulta hai the maximum number of teams in our top leagues is in the isl then second maximum 12 in the i league and then in the second division and then the third division so we right. need to do that and um what is brought in great spectators because is and brought in great new teams um so, the facilities world class facilities shown i mean have you seen the pitches in the kalinga cup i am drooling over them man yeah so it's, i really i really believe that you know यार वो बाहर करते हैं बिकॉज वो उनका उनका ना टेम्परेचर ऐसा है इंडिया में नहीं हो सकता है एंड दे मैनेज टू डू द सेम काइंड ऑफ थिंग इन इंडिया दैट ग्रास इज सो ब्यूटीफुल इट लुक्स लाइक अ प्रीमियर लीग मैच हैपनिंग बिकॉज़ आई एम टॉकिंग द पिच सो दैट्स ब्रॉट इन बाय द आईएसएल द कैमरा एंगल्स ब्रॉट इन बाय द आईएसएल बट वी हैव टू नाउ मेक श्योर दैट इट्स नॉट ओनली कमर्शियलाइजेशन राइट अदर पार्ट हैज टू कम इन दैट मींस डेवलपमेंट ऑफ द ग्रास रूट्स सो they yeah. don't realize fsdl that they own the entire indian ecosystem and if they're actually in it for the long term it's better for them that the second division and i league is strong because end of the day they'll get better players in the isl even if they don't want to a promotion relegation but if you have got shit i league and a shit second division <laughs> the players produced there will also be shit and the only right. players to get is from there only you can't get from anywhere else so it's not rocket right. science it's a vicious cycle you can't just develop okay like i can't say okay i want to have the best team in the world but i don't want to focus on strength and conditioning or have a sports science guy there yeah or i'll have the best team in the world but i won't have the best media team in the world because then i won't be able to take cristiano ronaldo's photo and i'll be able to sell it man or the shirts and sell it you know right. or if i have suni uh, if i have sunil chetri in my team i need the best physio to make sure he's fucking fit because he's 40 years old yeah And if I don't invest in him, does so it has to be the entire ecosystem, and people don't realize right. that. Yep. Right. Yeah. So, what do you think is the reason of our uh, league's coefficient dropping and we losing our spot in the Asian competitions? Um, because I tell you, most of the teams, yes. and no disrespect to Odisha or Mumbai or these, even us who we are who were there. they've never really faced tough competition in our own leagues for so long and i unless we have a longer league the more what happens is the moment any of our teams be it the isl or i league team go out and uh, goes out and plays those extra 6 to 10 matches 12 matches we get screwed yeah our entire season gets derailed i have never seen an indian team do well in the continental and the league in right. fact it's, it's it, abroad it's like a blessing here it's the worst curse in if you're in the <laughs> continental competition you're screwed in the league yeah so why there's no depth of squad there's no, they we not used to playing the entire year we not used to having a long season so all these things really matter and we don't take it seriously um, i would say right. that all all the coaches still take the their own leagues more seriously than that why because 
they still think we have no chance there. But unless you believe there's no chance, you have to actually prepare for it. That means if you know that you are in the Asian Cup or in the AFC Cup or in the Champions League, you start preparing for it from now. Start signing players of that level now if we actually want to do it. BSC yeah. actually did it once, preparing for the league and they almost did. They almost were that, that good and they won the cup almost left by this much. Because yeah. they prepared for it that way. They actually worked throughout the year. So, is it possible that we do it? Yes, it's possible, man. I did it with the Gothia Cup. I prepared for it with a year. And with the aim was that we have to go and beat 129 countries. But if I had yeah. said I'm going to do it for two months or three months, no chance. Definitely. Sir, so you mentioned... Great. I said yeah. great, but commercialization is what's screwing us. We need AFF to actually own the league. They can be the marketing partners, whatever partners. But the broadcast revenue has to come down to the clubs and to the other leagues down there. Yeah, uh, definitely, sir. You mentioned, you mentioned about uh, the Gothia Cup, which is something, another interesting thing around Indian football. And of course, you were awarded for your success at the Gothia Cup also. So, what are certain things around that tournament that taught you a bit more about Indian football or football in general or how we can do things better around football in our country? See, why have you made a big deal? Let me just tell you. ये when you ask them, who are you? They say champions. Who are you? Champions. That's their answer. They were the, known as the Gothia batch, the World Cup batch. Okay, they have that sticker and then uh, they were told that you're going to win, you're going to win, you're going to win. Nothing else matters. Win, 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 win. And then train to that way. So, we knew that obviously all the countries who'd been there before have a great advantage and obviously the European countries have a great advantage and they'll be training for two months, three months, four months. So, I said, okay, fine, I'll train for a year. Yeah. Then what will we do? So if my lung capacity is double of their lung capacity, doesn't matter how good you are in football, I will not let you play football. So the yeah. way we won it was not beating them in their game. We won it by making sure my boys were fitter than their boys and athletes who could bloody for 50-60 minutes just keep running up and down at the highest speed. So it doesn't matter if it's Brazil or it was Spain or it was Germany and their best clubs. We thrashed them because we didn't let them play. Every time they had the ball, we had two or three boys on them. Yeah. It's not, we don't have to get... See, this is another way of getting better in football. You don't let them play when they have the ball if you're athletes. Simple as that. And then when you have the ball, you can make as many mistakes. But because you have the ball, chances of you scoring are much more. Then, when I came to know that people like Andre Perlo and Ibramovic and uh, at least 50 others, like from even... Uh, the biggest names in football have played in the Gothia Cup and gone on for their careers. In the same tournament, even Rooney's son was there playing in one of the teams of us from England. Uh, then I read the Bolivia in Bolivia 1994, the under 19 team had come to the Gothia Cup. They yeah. won the Gothia Cup. They went on the same team. 14 of those members went on to play in the World Cup, for which they uh, qualified for using the same team. Yeah. So, seeing that this is possible and showing them this by taking them one year before this to the Mina Cup and winning it there, already set them on the standard that, okay, fine, we can, number one, beat people up abroad. And then second step, yes, we can beat everybody. Now, mm -hmm. next time any of these boys will play any team, doesn't matter how good it is from Brazil, Germany, Spain, they will never have that beer worse than them. Or, oh, oh my God, you're playing German in German boys. No, because then we're going to beat their ass <laughs> for minute one. And that's yeah. what the Indians need to think like. We have to believe in it. And not only believe, you can't just keep on believing it. We have to actually train for it like that. Train yeah. morning, morning, evening with the goal 2034. So that's the goal with these boys. Getting India to the World Cup in 34 and started training four years ago for that. So, as you yeah. mentioned about the World Cup 34, uh, I got a question from it. 
Uh, yes. There were rumors about hosting, co-hosting the 2034 World Cup with, along with Saudi Arabia. So, what are your thoughts on it? I hope everybody knows that if we have a co-hosting chance, it doesn't mean we have a free entry. We have a free entry. We still have to qualify. <laughs> I think it's a great opportunity. See, getting the Under-17 World Cup is different. Getting the World Cup here is immense. It will yeah. change the game. It will change the game in India. And why we have a great chance, I'm being honest now, why we have a great chance is because there are going to be 8 or 9 or 10 teams from Asia. 48 teams. If they 8, 8 means minimum hai, or 9th and 10th may be a playoff spot. Other teams yeah. will be Right now, we are 15, 16. So, from 16 to jump to 10 is possible in 7, 8 years. 2030. Yes. It's very yeah. possible. But that means you need to start now. These under 14 boys who are now the there, they are the ones who are going to take you. So, that's why I have... See, it's not only great uh, expectations from Arsene Menga. There is only no hope that he's the only one. When I say he, yeah. this project which is the FIFA World Cup project, I mean, the FIFA Training Center of Excellence, that's the only hope if we're actually going to qualify for 34. Next one, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, actually, uh, yeah, because, uh, like, sorry to interrupt you here, Doi, but uh, uh, because, like, I saw that in the 2010 Commonwealth Games when they happened in India, I think they brought about a, a culture of sports in the country which wasn't palpable before that because, uh, like with everything that happened on the bureaucratic grounds in terms of corruption and all, I think the whole country watched those games and people like generally had an interest. I remember uh, back then I was uh, in school and uh, I spent the whole of my summer vacations uh, watching every game and each game, like games like netball from like, I had no idea about that, watching the broadcasting, knowing about how hockey used to be in the country. I think that was one of the things because which kind of motivated me that at some point I want to do something around sport, even though I was never into sports. Uh, like I used to play sports, but I was never very good at it. Uh, because I think uh, it's when you see people from our own country giving their best, uh, there were teams like there were games like water polo in which I hadn't really seen in India, end, but I could yeah. still see them competing, trying to do something. So I think that really changes a lot of things. And I think uh, you're right, sir, that the World Cup might just kick about a regulation because even with the under-17 World Cup, when, the, when players like Ryan Brewster, Phil Foden came here in this country, I think it brought about a change. It was a very big deal for the country like India at that point of time. It was huge. And in fact, see, uh, right now the Kerala government is actually thinking of inviting the Argentina team to Kerala. Yeah, yeah. for that yeah. you don't understand what it means. It means like paying the Argentina something, Argentina team something like four, five, six million dollars or something like that. Right. It's not an invitation that you come, okay? I'm you know, going to bring They're going to bring Messi there and they're going to take their money. So that means it's that much worth it. So imagine in that World Cup, whenever it happens, that times it won't be Messi. That times Messi or that times Ronaldo will be there in one of the teams. All the bloody teams will be here. So, hmm. it will change India into a football-crazy country overnight. When the World Cup happens thousands of miles away every four years, all of us fucking go crazy, man. Yeah. Yeah. In all the remote corners of India. Okay. So, so many so, new Messi fans. Exactly. So, imagine if it happens in India. Yeah. And especially, like you said, Anukash, that you know, when you were there, you were growing up 2010-11. The generation of players growing up watching the World Cup when they're small, that is the generation which is going to create great, great players. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I think, sir, as we promised at the beginning that we would keep it for 40, 45 minutes, we have stretched it a bit. But of course, we have time for one more question from Aditya, if he has one. Yes. Uh, yeah, I wanted to ask about uh, the development of futsal in India. As we've yeah. seen in football, we are already very much uh, developed in terms, in terms of league system. We are already going to introduce relegation in the coming years in ISL. What do you think about the development of football? Right, first of all, right. let me make some controversial statements like I always Okay, okay. <laughs> let's so go. And then you can use this. Okay. For your <laughs> <laughs> podcast trailer, yeah. Yeah, 
<laughs> Unfortunately, there is still no relegation and promotion in ISL. Yeah. This is all a farce. Yeah. Punjab FC, I know, my team, X team, I have sold it. Uh. Had paid franchise fees to FSDL to get in. Uh. Because they were told before the season very clearly that we will be taking this much production money from you. 14 crores or 12 crores. So oh. they calculated 14 crores, they ke, 16 crores, 18 crores, they ke, in se jo hum in ka 14, crores milna hai, wohi le le te. So that means this team is not being promoted because it won the I League. It's been promoted because they. So, end of the day, I don't care. They're giving them franchise fees. So, it's a franchise. So, wo abhi tak nahi shuru hua. so I really hope, forget about relegation, I hope promotion starts, which I really doubt. Okay? So, now, Correct. now let's come to Putsal. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, so I, I okay, this is still to... questionable about uh, this uh, relegation promotion. I agree to it, but at but least there were talks I about. Think, I tell you, see, futsal. May I'm very sad. Why? Because um, we are prehistoric in futsal. Futsal. What do I mean by that? That we are living in the Stone Age, and the world has grown up, and they're living in the 21st century. Why do I say yeah. that? The number of futsal courts in India zero. Futsal court is not a wooden court. It's a totally different surface altogether, which even I didn't know of till I went there and saw what a futsal court is. India does not produce any futsal balls. The balls produced in futsal in India, which are available, all the brands are not futsal balls. They're actually football skins. Actual futsal ball, the actual skin of the futsal ball is very thin. And the bladder is right next to it. So that yeah. is why when they tow it, it goes black and you can't even have the thing. India, we already tore the ball, it goes like this. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. we didn't know. So all my boys who played the first international didn't know how to tow the ball because we never used to tow because it used to hurt so much. Because yeah. it's not our fault because the footsteps are like this. That's yeah, how far yeah. we are. Okay. Where are the other countries? So we played Myanmar, Burma. Okay. Yes, they have played over 40 internationals. Already, they have been playing futsal for the last 20 years. They played yeah. their last first international 20 years ago. Tajikistan played their first international 29 years ago. They played over 200 internationals. They have two divisions in their futsal league, which happens every year. Whoa. Same. And obviously, things like Uzbekistan and all these countries are in the top 20 ranking of the world, man. So now, how does it matter? It matters if you love football, to, you want football to grow, futsal has to grow. Futsal is gully, gully football. Like, we do well in cricket because of gully cricket. Because in every gully, cricket is being played. Till we have football being played in every gully, we are not going to do well. So, people say, no, 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 futsal is, you know, actual courts and all. No, it's not. France, this year, 90% of the team, which was in the France World Cup final team, 90% of them grew up in the suburbs of Paris, growing up in cement football, playing in small spaces with chains all around them because yeah, you yeah. grow up so fast because even if you're small you grow up not wanting to fall because you don't want to fall so and then you grow up how to release the ball very quickly in small sided spaces how to quick pass how to do skills this all learned in futsal all countries which are great in football are great in futsal there is no anomaly there basically what is futsal so what do coaches keep on doing SSG, SSG, SSG. That's SSG, small sided game. Yeah, Simple. small sided. Correct. And if you are not good in the technical part, you can never be good in the big. Now, the future of football. I'm, I'm guaranteeing, predicting it in 20 years, our kids will not be watching football because 90 minutes also will be too long. Right now, we can't even think of sitting what our parents used to do. They used to sit in front of a TV and watch football, uh, cricket for five days. Yeah, <laughs> some of them still do wink wink. Yeah, and they used to watch that the whole day. Now they can't, and T20, and that is yeah. why it's that even though crick, test cricket was the purest of all, like football is the purest for purest, it will always be pure. But these are the games which will take over. And now, why am I so supporting futsal all the time? Because the only place where we can do well immediately in world standards is futsal. Why? Because in futsal, you don't make size. In fact, it's worse. If the bigger you are, the worse you are in futsal because you need quick agility. Yeah. Right. 
then you don't need speed because it's a very small court then you don't need you don't need physicality because the moment you foul somebody it's a penalty yeah this is a right. sport that's why this is a sport japan does very well in iran does very well in portugal does very well in spain does very well in all the small small guys yeah the i think now that we have hit the r mark uh, thank you ranjit sir for taking out the time to do this uh, there are many things and even though it's only just been about over 2 years but now we are a community of 40 50 people from different sporting backgrounds and everyone was very excited for this ranjit uh, bajaj episode so it will of course do a lot to the people that we know the people that hear our podcast uh, we look forward to having you around with us maybe sometime in different capacities and yeah hoping for india to uh, do very well in football and for all your dreams around indian football and indian clubs come true uh, anything that anukash and aditya want to add at the end please please this is the time i think because humne pranjit sir ka waise bhi kafi time le liya hai i have just one yeah, final yeah, thing to ask you sir ek message de do indian football ke yeah, liye jo aap dena chahte ho anything you want to say to our viewers that you know if the next uh, what should i say not even next to nil chetri the next uh, whatever for that matter uh, someone uh, who wants to be you know the next big thing in indian football uh, what is the message that ranjit bajaj wants to give today that you know he or she might say in an interview 20 years down the line well uh, i know for a fact i can guarantee it the the best player ever to play football for india has already been born he's yeah. just not been found yet so yeah. are you that guy and yeah. if you are keep working hard because you will get there that's a beautiful way to sum up things thank you so much sir for your time and uh, uh, thank you so much aditya once again for helping us get ranjit sir on board it means a lot to us sir. i think it's a very nice way to start our third year into the indi football podcast and mm-hmm. we look forward to uh, having you more on the panel sometimes as on youtube live or maybe on the indi football podcast very soon thank you yeah. it would be thank my you. pleasure thank you. thank you so much for having me on indi football podcast thank you so much vipan thank you anukash thank you aditya Jai Hind and let's hope for a great great year in Indian football bleed blue Absolutely bleed blue sir thank you bleed so much blue.